What's going on, everybody? Go ahead and give me a mic check and let me know if you can uh, see the screen. Uh, hear me okay? Uh, we'll get started in a couple of minutes. How's everybody doing? What's going on? All right, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and or not. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so what we're going to do here is uh, give you guys the uh, sort of makeup of a swing trade, particularly an option swing trade. Um, and, you know, messing around with the stock uh, versus the option is a lot different. So we're going to give you a little, a couple of tips here to go forward. Uh, and then if you guys want the real kind of discussion and the real uh, uh, advanced learning here, I'll give you some uh, uh, uh uh, ways here to get uh, a little bit more advanced as far as your trading. Uh, so uh, let's start off here just with a quick introduction for those of you guys who uh, who haven't been around uh, saying Lucci and Wall Street Jesus. Uh, we offer a uh, master course here uh, with tape reading. Uh, we do flow trading as well. And the flow trading here, you're basically uh, getting data on uh, aggressive options activity and uh, uh, basing trades basing trade ideas uh, off of that flow. We call it the sort of options flow. Uh, and we flag certain items uh, because we like them for how aggressive the player is being uh, and how often, uh, uh, oftentimes some of this flow comes back to back to back. 
so inside the master course here, you're going to get uh, your tape reading, which is most of the focus, uh, psychology section, uh, as well as a writing strategy. How many of you guys write options right now? And how many of you guys swing options? How many of you guys uh, uh, aggressively write options or swing trade options uh, at the moment here? And the swing trading, uh, you know, can really be sort of defined by uh, positions that you hold for a week. Uh, I even call them, you know, a couple of days. Some people call them position trading as well. Um, you know, but anything where you 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 really have to monitor where your entries are uh, because you're planning on holding overnight, several nights in a row, uh, that qualifies as a swing trade. Uh, so again, you'll learn all this. You get 12 sessions plus four uh, live trading sessions as well. Uh, and we'll go ahead and give you a discount link towards the end. Uh, Charlie, if you want to send them a, a link there just to get started, if you guys want to peruse uh, that uh, page here, and then we'll start uh, getting into the swing trade. So first and foremost, uh, what are the most important things to look for when you are hunting here uh, for a swing trade? By the way, we got a lot of swing traders here coming in here, but a lot of uh, uh, day traders here as well. Uh, that are looking towards getting into uh, uh, swing trading, but uh, they don't really understand, uh, you know, what strikes to go for, what expirations to go for, and really, uh, you know, this is this is uh, this is what we want to tackle here in this particular webinar. Uh, and not that easy, though. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things that you have to take into consideration when you are swing trading. Okay. So where I base most of my swing trades is first and foremost off the indexes. If you don't know where your indexes are going or the sentiment on your indexes, uh, you know, versus what you're trading, this is going to make for very, very difficult swing trading for you. Because how many of you guys have bought an option and you could have waited and got it for cheaper? How many of you guys have uh, has, has that happened uh, too as well. I mean, we're all uh, sort of guilty of that. Um, you know, there's always times where we buy options, buy swing options, options that we plan on holding that in reality, because of the environment that we're in, we could have got those options for significantly cheaper. Okay. And that happens all day long here, especially in consolidation sort of environments. So we're going to take a look at uh, the environment right now, uh, as well as uh, uh, hit you with that uh, uh, Netflix swing sort of setup. Um, so the first thing that I always take a look at is what are the indexes doing and how are they doing it? Right now we have massive, massive consolidation. So most of the names that you guys are watching uh, you know, they kind of look like this. They kind of look like these big 10 day ranges where things are just not doing anything. Uh, you know, you take a look at Apple, you take a look at a, a Baba here, for example, where things are just kind of doing nothing and you get these fake outs here. OK, now we're going to come back to the fake outs here as well. This is a very important part of swing trading as it screws many people up as well. So we're going to show how some of the fake outs here affect your options pricing, which in turn causes you guys to uh, get too heavy too early uh, or, you know, uh, uh, buy in way too high uh, and adjust your premium up. Uh, and then you, get, you guys end up taking a monster loss. OK, so the first things first is what is the index is doing and how are they doing it? Right now we're in a massive sort of consolidation range where there's relative strength here and there. Anybody want to toss out what's relatively strong and what's relatively weak? I mean, I think we, 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 we can all agree on the weak side. You have some of the banks right here, right? That are just reacting right now very weak. You know, there's a weak tape every single day that you come in uh, and take a look at the bank stocks, despite the fact that the market is, generally speaking, uh, holding up a little bit. OK, so we you, you want to notice that. Right. You want to notice that. Whereas some of the cues, some of the tech names have been unusually bullish. How many of you guys have traded this uh, this this micron? Right. Obviously, barring today. You know, this Micron is on a monumental move here, 20 point move up uh, in the past several weeks while the market has pretty much done fucking nothing. OK, so you always want to note what's relatively strong. What is money moving into? What are they starting to play, even though the market is just completely dead? 
Okay. Now let's bring in the Netflix. Okay. Netflix, uh, you know, when if you look at a, 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 a simple chart here, you can see that, uh, uh, you know, over 330, it has some issues, right? Over 330, it has some issues. We had a big sell off here off the earnings and then, uh, you know, a nice little consolidation. Now, what was the market doing at this time? That's the first thing that I, I thought about before even entering or even thinking about the idea of Netflix going higher. So we look at 5.4 uh, uh, in May, okay? So we can see May, we tested that sort of low end of the SPY. We faked everybody out down here. I don't know how many of you guys were down here messing around here with this with this SPY at this time. I was pretty aggressively short, and then I kind of saw this big massive squeeze coming on. And then 5.4 was this day that we just kind of ripped three, you know, 30, 40 handles on the SPY. Now, where did most of that juice go? Most of that juice went to this freaking Netflix, and this Netflix shot right back up to 3.30. So I'm sitting there thinking like, okay, if the market here really wants to rally, right? If the market here really wants to push higher and push higher towards 270 and all this kind of stuff, you know, what are we really, what are we gonna look like? What are we gonna look like and what needs to happen for this thing to move? So market pushes all the way back to 270. Netflix has a consolidation right here at 330, which to me was different. And again, this is all tape reading. This is now all tape reading, which we do very aggressively in uh, the course here. OK, how to understand bid and ask, how to understand supply and demand and how to understand where they're just going to kind of let these things go. So Netflix here during this consolidation, you could now give yourself an entry here. It's like, okay, we're kind of holding up here. Market looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and try to pin for an entry, okay? So now enter what strike do you want to come into, okay? So uh, I, I pulled up this uh, 340 call, and you guys will see I pulled up a, uh, a trade blotter here too for you as well. So you guys can see my entries too. So you can see the entries here on Netflix, and I'll go ahead and highlight some of these things for you here uh, too. So you can see all these entries here on the same day and uh, all around, you know, four bucks, five bucks, somewhere around there. And I got up to about 35 contracts. I wanted to get a lot more of this. Trust me, I wanted to get a lot more. The problem was the damn thing moved so freaking quick uh, and I just kind of let it go. So uh, let's go back here to uh, that particular day. Okay, so uh, if we go back here to our options chart, remember this is a 340 call for June. All right, and the reason why I chose June was that remember it was probably, you know, mid-May at that time. So I wanted to give a solid month here for this thing to work. And all I was doing here was waiting for some solid action over 3.30. And then I got my day here over 3.30, and I think it was around 5.21 or so. You can, we, can, uh, we can look back here. 5.21, we got up to about 3.35. And those previous all-time highs was, uh, you know, I think it was uh, like 3.40 or somewhere around there. So I was like, okay, this looks pretty good. This looks pretty good. Now, what happened the next day, this was the tricky part, and this is what's always gonna happen to you with your swing trades. This is why you always wanna leave some room and add in a little bit of this stuff, okay? So the market at this time, remember, we're talking about 524 or somewhere around here, um, we gap down, we gap lower, and you know, I think it was just one of these range kind of days. I think it was this day right here. This is on the 24th, right? So we gap lower. It looked like we were going to tank, and then the market just came shooting right back, and they just bought up Netflix, and they bought up text. They bought up text like crazy. And that was all tape from the morning. So if you guys take a look at the tape from the morning, there was instant buyers, a lot of demand here for this particular stock. And then as the market moved higher, we just kind of kept going. We kept going and we kept going. My target was 350. So all I wanted, uh, you know, was was around. Actually, no, I think my target was around 340, 342, 345. So I started coming off of this as well. OK, so now we take a look back at this option here. Uh, and your entry here, again, you for your swing entries, you're always looking for the premium before everybody else kind of wants into it, okay? Now, there's still juice, obviously, after the fact, you know, if you can find dips and things like that. But you're only going to get the cheapest premium here before these things happen. So they happen in anticipation. All right. So it's all about anticipating 
all of these things kind of connecting here. What is the market doing? What are the queues doing? What are some of the other names as well? Uh, you know, what are some of the sister names doing? Uh, you know, and you're kind of putting this all together here to give you a picture on when, you know, this breakout should happen. And then try to position yourself in the best place. OK, now notice how cheap these options got. You know, I mean, there's people here who bought in what this thing got to about nine bucks and all the way down to about three and a half dollars. All right. So the options premium in general, this is going to take you for a ride. There's going to be a lot a wide range here before you actually get your move. And this is what makes it very difficult for swing traders. How many of you guys have been shaken out of your positions uh, before you hit your move? How many of you guys have done that? A lot of that time, a lot of that stuff happens because you get too heavy too early. OK, and then you have to sit through pullbacks like this, which you're not ready for. OK, which you're which you're not ready for at all. So we're going to talk about fake outs in a little bit. But let's finish up this Netflix. All right. So uh, the Netflix here, uh, let's scroll down to the exits and you'll see on the 24th here. Uh, let's see. Netflix here. 340. Uh, let's go to 340. Yeah, right here. OK, so here are all your cells. 1370, 1450, 1550, 16 bucks, 1580. OK, you know, pretty good chunk of change right there. I mean, you're making triple here on a move in an option on a 10 point move, maybe a 12 point move or whatever on that particular stock. OK, and even though you're in a monthly here, you're still tripling. Those gains are going to be there. Don't worry about that. The problem is, is the timing. The problem is always, always the timing. And notice I was out even a little bit earlier. You know, I got 13, I got 14, I got 15. And this option ended up going to what? 20 friggin' bucks. OK, now this is where it gets difficult. OK, how many of you guys are still holding this Netflix long? In reality, if you still want to continue to hold these things, remember, you are in an option. You're not in a fucking stock. OK, you're not going to be uh, uh, faced with a situation where you're going to get premium that kind of works against you. All right. Now, remember, in any option, remember, this is a 340 option. The stock's trading 351 right now and you get an option that's worth 15 bucks. As we get closer to expiration, the value of this option is slowly, slowly going to get towards that intrinsic value. So God forbid if we get a five point pullback on Netflix. Where do you think this option is going to be? This option is going to get fucking smoked out, okay, with you or without you, okay? Now, how many of you guys sell options against, uh, you know, long swing trades, okay? Uh, Mike here is saying you don't hold common along with options. You could do that as well, so we could talk about that as well. But I'm assuming here if you're going in for a pure options position. All right. So now what I want to throw in the mix here for you guys and give you a little bit of advice is that this is when you start writing options against your core position. This is also when you start rolling your options to some more time. OK, how many of you guys understand what I'm saying? These are two concepts that a lot of swing traders who trade options, they don't fucking understand. They don't understand at all. OK, so what does it mean to roll an option? All right. So let's say I took my profits right there on the, you know, the 340 call and I wanted to go ahead and roll my option to the next month because I don't want to get smoked with time decay. OK, so what do I do? I come over here to this chain. Right. And I come over here. I take a look at July. Remember, you still got some earnings here baked into this, but, you know, whatever. It is what it is. And you start rolling into some of these options. You start buying these options. So that way you still have your swing. If Netflix rolls higher, you're still going to make money here on this option. And on top of that, you have the opportunity to write some weekly premium against, uh, uh, you know, whatever you intend on holding. So take a look at this option right here. This is a 355 weekly call. That's going to expire this week. OK, now what you're going to do here is that, again, this comes with tape reading. The, the, the tape reader has to look at these rallies and realize there's nothing behind them. Why is there nothing behind them? Well, maybe this thing is already juiced up. Maybe the indexes don't want to go anywhere and that we have seen that 100 percent every single day. The spy doesn't want to go anywhere. The cues don't want to go anywhere. So all of these rallies are bullshit. They're all bullshit. Now, do you know before they happen that they're bullshit? No. However, 80 percent of the time, guys, when your name is in consolidation, 
These things ain't going to break out. They're not going to break out. And if and when they do, they're not going to make it fucking easy for you. There's always going to be some kind of a washout before you get that. You guys saw what happened here. I, uh, you know, what did I size up right here? And then you get a fade day that washes everybody out, kills your premium, and then you get your move. Same thing is most likely going to happen up here as well. So now look at how fat these premiums are because you're in a 355 call. You can even go safer and go out to, let's say, a 360, and you can write the shit out of this thing. You can even go farther than that. You can go five points, ten points away from this thing, and you can still get a dollar of premium to write the shit out of this thing and take this to the bank. So while you're sitting here holding your long swing, you can go ahead and create some income here to help you offset that cost and make money while you are waiting. OK, now this is, again, something that a lot of traders don't put in their arsenal or don't even know that exists. Um, and it gets difficult too to manage some of this stuff as well. And this is where this tape reader really has the advantage, because, number one, if you're sitting here watching the buyers the whole way up on the Netflix and then all of a sudden you're watching the buyers again and you're like, eh, this doesn't look like that, then that's how you can go ahead and lean on some of these options crush these things to absolute zero while you still hold your swing position because you want, you know, you want 20 bucks, you want 25 bucks, or you want to continue rolling into a name. So for example, on a name like a Micron, where you just don't want to take your profits here, you just want to go ahead and roll and roll and roll and roll, that is affordable here to you, you know? So any pullback that you get, you roll into some options that have some more time on them, uh, and that's really the most important part. You always want to have enough time. If you believe your move can happen right now, that's when you want to mess around with your weeklies. OK, but beyond that, you want to buy some time. So that's the Netflix trade right there. I mean, that was a good triple. Now, if I had the weeklies, guys, I mean, yeah, sure. I would have been up four times my money. I would have been up five times. I would have been up six times or seven times or whatever the hell. However, if you're sitting there watching the Netflix, I also day traded this as well and added some income too. So while I saw this thing rip into the moon and, and literally every buyer was just chomping at every single offer here when I, as I looked at the tape, it's like, holy shit, this thing is going, you know, it's most likely going to test 340. Let's go ahead and play a weekly call right here. You know, so on top of your swing, you're now adding in some weekly plays. You're adding in some writing plays. You could also, I, I love, you know what else, you know what other strategy I love for swing trading? If you actually catch a swing and it's working, you can write the opposite side. You can write that side. So, so take a look at all the premium that you could have ate up on these Junes. Like, look at these, uh, let's see, look at these, uh, look at these three, four, look at this shit. Look at this shit. I mean, this is where the real bank is at. Now, the problem is, is that you're going to be super levered to one particular side. So you better fucking know you're on the right side. And this, again, comes with uh, effective tape reading as well. But take a look at the fat premiums here. You know, this is five days on a Netflix 340 put, you know. So this thing went – this thing goes from what? Nine bucks and change to three bucks. This thing is probably going to – yeah, this thing is going to expire worthless more or less. It's got a couple of weeks left to go. Uh, but again, you can start playing the game that way as well. John Doe is also asking if we had some Netflix sweepers. Absolutely. So that adds to the mix as well, uh, as well as what uh, uh, the Steam Room here can do for you too. So we had a lot of Netflix weekly call sweepers, you know, that came in for the 350s, that came in for the 340s, that came in for all these weekly strikes, and they were laying size too. Um, you know, and that was, by the way, that was on the day that uh, everybody wanted to be in it. So there was, uh, you know, there was a sweeper that came in at the end of the day, even at 350 or wherever the hell it was, and then caught another gap up and caught another move the next day. Um, you know, so there's folks here throwing down some big cash on some weekly options as well as some monthlies that we can go ahead and follow. There's a swing here that I have going on right now. That unfortunately is not working out great, and I want to go ahead and throw out, you know, some of the issues that I'm having on that one as well. Okay, but those are, you know, those are the things that you want to look for when you're hunting for a swing trade. And then, how do you form and maintain that conviction 
to hold through the fake outs and the shakeouts. OK, now this is a, this is a complicated scenario here, and this is why I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring in Microsoft. OK, so Microsoft here, I got a shit ton of this thing. Right. So I got uh, this month's or sorry, June 100s and I got July. I got July 100s, too. All right. So I got a bunch of these, too. So I got hundreds of contracts in this Microsoft right now. And, you know, there's a lot of flow going with this as well. If we take a look at the Microsoft, too. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at the Microsoft here. And you can see all the Microsoft here. Look at them piling up into July 105. So there's a lot of folks thinking the $100 break could happen soon. Now, here's the issue. What is the issue? The issue is look at the fucking spy, right? What are we doing? What are we doing? We're doing nothing here. We're doing nothing. Yesterday's uh, a couple of days ago here when we faked everybody out, kind of came back. I thought we were going to but you know rip through that 274. So through this chop, there are big issues that are going to happen to you. Now let's talk about these issues, right? How many of you guys have been faked out of these swing trades? God knows how many we have been faked out of because you want to get the size, you think you're right, you get aggressive. How many of you guys get too confident and then all of a sudden and then all of a sudden what happens? You get moves like this, okay? Now, I want you guys to tell me OK, from you. And actually, let's go ahead and pull up a Microsoft option. And that way, this looks real easy uh, to check out. Right. So let's take a look at this Microsoft option for the last 10 days. Right. So here we go. This is it. Plain and simple. Now, when you get these spike ups, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? Notice Microsoft spikes up every single day, every single day. And what happens to the options premium? OK, what happens? Right. You get these big volatile spikes. Right. So this option goes to a buck 20, a buck 20. Today it goes to a buck 40. What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? You're buying here. So the swing trader does what? He only averages his position when it looks good. OK. And I'm talking about most swing traders, most swing traders, when it when the trade looks good, they want to go ahead and average up. Now, what is the shitty part about this? OK, well, let's say you started with a 90 cent uh, average. Well, all of a sudden, if you keep buying up here, your average is a buck 20. Your average might be a little bit more. And now you got size. OK, so now if there's a shakeout. You can't hold on to it. You cannot hold on to it. Now you got so much size and your account goes to absolute fucking shit. How many of you guys are, you know, are the light bulbs going off right here? OK, this is a lot of you guys right now. This is myself included. I've done this many, many, many a time. And then you got to make up for it. Right. You got to hedge. You got to you got to you got to come up with something else. You got to day trade out of it, whatever the hell it is. This is when the problems start happening. When you go ahead and size up and you pay up for it, you increase your cost. And then when that inevitable pullback does come, if your timing is not right, you get fucking smoked. OK, now this is the issue here. How do you stay? How do you stick with the trade? OK, so number one, you can't get aggressive here at those highs. If you do. Be ready to come back out. OK, a lot of you guys aren't ready to jump in and jump out and adjust and adjust and adjust. This is what you're going to do every single second of every single day. If you are babysitting a swing trade, adjust, 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 adjust or or there's a couple other ways to do it. OK, you have your max risk that you're willing to take and you put it aside and you let it go. You accept the fact that this option could go to zero. Or you're going to get twice or you're going to get three times. You know, that's also a strategy as well. All right. So you can pick one of the two. What is a, you know, one of the which one works better for you? OK. And how aggressive do you want to be? All right. So how to maintain that conviction? Number one, size will kill you unless you you understand how to how to how to how to rotate in and out of it, how to manage that size. And then the pricing here on that option will always kill you guys. Nine times out of ten, if you fucking wait 30 minutes, you're going to get your option for cheaper. You're going to get your option for fucking cheaper. All right. Now. Are there those one out of 10 times where it's just going to go, go gadget? Absolutely. That's what you're positioning here for to figure out when that when that stock is going to move. 
Okay. Now, Microsoft here in general, we know damn well just by looking at the action for the last five days, she ain't going to move without the market. She's not going to move without the market. So why do we, you know, why are we so, why are we so gung ho on this thing moving right now if we don't have mother market? All right. So again, comes back to where the indexes are. All right. And comes back to bringing it all together to find the, uh, you know, the right time. The less you know about when this stock is going to move, the less confident you are. What does that mean? That means the more fucking time you need to be buying on your options. If you're in a freaking weekly going for Microsoft Hundo, which, by the way, today probably looked pretty good. Like, look at let's look at all the people that got fucking burnt today. I think this thing was trading 40 cents. Let's look at this one. Let's go to this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You love that right there, right? So this thing rips to 40 cents. You got all the chumps and the pikers out there, right? And Al is saying right here, the entire world thought Microsoft would take 100 today. Exactly. So if so, everybody's buying up here. They're all buying the options. They're all buying June. They're up there buying everything. Everything today they are buying. And then look at this. This is what happens to most traders. This right here can also be looked at as the graveyard of traders who attempt to make money in the markets. All right. By looking at their technicals, by looking at this or that. All right. Now, tape is where things change here. If your tape doesn't tell you that demand is supported, and for some reason those same buyers that push the stock up just disappeared, then that's when you got to start moving. You have to start moving, all right? And this is where the adjusting and this is where the, uh, uh, the knowledge about how to read tape here can really help you save some, save some of those inevitable losses uh, and make sure you're there aggressively when these things are actually ready to move and when they all line up properly, all right? So those are two great examples of swing trades that, uh, you know, some worked here. One is still waiting to work and might not. Who knows? Um, so the last thing here we want to talk about is when do you start taking gains or reducing the size of your position? All right. So I get this question a lot. And for me, like, you know, let's take a look at this Microsoft here. Let's take a look at this Microsoft. Microsoft, for me, I'm always in an option looking to double my option, right? So if, I, if my cost is at a dollar, I'm looking to sell at two dollars. Anything it does in between is just me trying to figure out when the fuck is going to move. That's it. That's, that's all I'm doing. Now that I have all this information going for me on Microsoft, I know that unless the spy here is really planning to hold 272, 273 and possibly break through 274, I ain't going to get the greatest fucking move on this Microsoft. I'm not going to get it. I ain't going to get it. All right. It ain't going to go to 102. It ain't going to go to 103 unless the market is with us. And now somebody take a look at this last 10 days of, of the spy and tell me if this market is with us right now. You don't fucking know. You don't know. You don't know. We got no clue. In reality, a couple of days ago, we had a huge sell off. There was a lot of people that thought that, we, you know, we were just going to dump here. They caught a bunch of people again. And look at us now. We don't know what the hell we're doing. Right. So until I get confidence here on the market, I'm not going to sit here and get super uh, and get that much more aggressive here on Microsoft. If anything, I'm going to shave off some because now I know, hey. Probably not going to get a fucking dollar for this option. I'll probably get 70 cents back on this option. I'll probably get 80 cents back on this option. You see how many people she caught up here? Oh, boy. Did she catch a lot of us up here? So now you know what they do, right? They punish you and punish you and punish you until nobody is left. And then it's okay for these things to move. All right? Generally speaking, that is how these things work. OK, so I have a risk to reward kind of set out. I have a dollar amount in my mind for the Microsoft, which is around 102 and change. And we go there, uh, you know, as such. OK, so uh, let's go ahead and take a bunch of questions. And while you guys throw out these questions, uh, I want to give you guys the uh, the discount code here for the master course. Uh, so originally here, thirty five hundred dollar price tag. And uh, I think we got a fat discount here for you guys. So uh, go ahead and hit the link. Uh, I think it's Sanglucci. Uh, let's see. Charlie, what is it? Sanglucci.com forward slash MC1000. And then you guys go ahead and get a thousand, uh, thousand bucks off. And we are going to start this course on the 25th. So the 25th. And by the way, 
if you did want to start early and, uh, you know, and just kind of get the idea of the material early, um, you know, you can go ahead and subscribe and then we'll go ahead and give you all the database and we'll go ahead and give you, um, uh, access to all the previous recordings, all the live tape reading sessions are here as well. You get a month free of the webinar to, or sorry, of the steam room. So that way, all your information, everything is going to be uh, uh, stored right here in this portal for you. And then you get access to the feed and the live feed with myself and Wall Street Jesus on it as well. Uh, so you can just start uh, sort of eating up and consuming uh, this um, uh, uh, master course material before we start our live session too. Okay. All right. Uh, so questions. Uh, I have actually just been informed by my guy here. We, we, we only have three spots left. Okay. At that thousand dollar level for this particular webinar. Okay. So keep that in mind. Uh, and again, the, uh, the date is the June 25th. Okay. Uh, by the way, I am going to Puerto Rico, so I am planning on moving uh, some operations here to Puerto Rico, uh, and we'll be teaching most of this class in Puerto Rico as well. Uh, all right, so uh, questions here. Burge here is saying market sell-off is BS. Uh, uh, market is taking it. Once tariffs clear up, once what's left, uh, you know, Burge, again, sure, you can spit fundamentals all day, right? Do you know when? No. Now, options is all based on timing. So purporting here about fundamentals means what to anybody? You know, I, you have your idea and it's like, OK, where is this going to happen? You know, but again, still, do we know? No. So we need to buy more time. Uh, Al here is saying Microsoft also acts according to a pattern in different pattern and uh, blah, blah, blah. Havana, Microsoft 100 is a huge level. Will tease go back up before it breaks through? Who gives a shit? Uh, Richard, what's going on? Uh, Chris Tapps is saying, is swinging options a good way to grow a small 25K account? This is a good question. Uh, buying as much uh, as okay to lose and aim for two times at least. Chris Tapps, that's a great way to go about it. I think it's a great way to go about it. You know, But again, you have to find your niche. And that's what one of the things I really help uh, traders to do. Uh, and you can take a look at the testimonials too. Uh, Charlie will also hook you up with a lot of the testimonials too. A lot of the articles that pe that folks have written about the, uh, the the class in general and how it has helped them. But that's one of the big things that we do. We help you find what it is what it is that you're good at, and that's what you're going to zero in on. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't know, uh, you know, if you don't know one of the things that you're good at or or some of the things that you just suck at. You know, it's really going to hit you hard. So Chris Tapps, we have some guys that are great scalpers. They're great at overnight lotto kind of scalpers, um, you know, and they just take small size and they and they just kind of, you know, rip weekly trades here and, you know, here and there. We got other guys who like to swing a little bit more heavy and they're not that active on the day trading stuff. So Chris Tapps, what you would end up doing. If you did, you know, if that strat if that strategy did suit you is that you would end up coming here. Seeing what, you know, some of the other larger players are going after, seeing what the sort of sentiment and the overall sentiment in the market is, and then trying to pick a couple of swings that worked here and there. You know, this Snapchat, uh, you know, for the past couple of days, there were some folks that, um, you know, really lighted up some options on this one when the move just started. So we were seeing options players come in at 1060 and 1070. I don't trade this thing because I fucking hate it. But this is <laughs> this is a big move. That Micron from 46, monster swing trade, you know, monster swing trade. The Nvidia uh, we caught from 240, you know. So these are all great examples of some swings that if you have some set risk, you know, maybe you put a grand in these things, maybe you put two, and accept the fact that you're going to lose that amount. You can end up making two, three times on the ones that work out, and it ends up being a pretty damn good strategy. So Chris Tapps, I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. Okay, uh, John is saying what happens in PR. I mean, I don't know. People live in PR, bro. Uh, Jamie is saying, do you full size or average into your position, then scale out? Jamie, all day average in, scale the fuck out. I'm all day adjusting. I'm adding 10. I'm taking off 10. I'm adding 20. I'm taking off 20. I'm adding 100. I'm selling. And then if and then if all of a sudden I get my move like that Netflix, it's like, all right, let's burn. Let's burn a five lot. Let's burn a five lot. Let's burn a five lot. And you can see it, I think, on my um, – I think you can see it here on my uh, exits here. 
Yeah, so you can see here, one out, 1370, four out, 1370. I get more out, 14 and a half. And as this thing continues to go, you know, I'm slowly just booking, I'm just booking that, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just, just, I'm just in there, you know? So again, so I'm always adding, I'm always subtracting, I'm always, and then if I really like something, you know, I'll just keep adding, I'll keep adding, I'll keep adding. But if you're wrong, if you are wrong, and you are biased, meaning you are mentally stuck to that trade, you're fucked. There's nothing that can help you. There's nothing, there's nobody in this world that can help you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I don't mean like, I don't mean like in general, I mean like for that particular trade. How many of you guys have gotten so biased to something and so attached emotionally to something and you were so heavy and that trade just fucking destroyed you? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think we've all been there. And that is the one thing that you guys as swing traders or if you're trying to be a swing trader, you have you have to find a solution for that one particular problem. Because if you can find a solution for that problem, you lengthen your your career as a trader five fucking years or a decade. even. OK, so if that one issue is your particular issue. You need me to smack the shit out of you, which is what I will gladly do in uh, the uh, the course here. And ask anybody who's taken it, boy, have I smacked the shit out of people. Uh, let's see. What's my favorite setup? Uh, V-shape recoveries. Uh, uh, let's see. So uh, can we even find one? Was that Netflix one? Maybe. Not really. I mean, these consolidation breakouts are good, but I like the V-shape recovery where they smoke people, they get people out completely, and then they just bring these things right back. I mean, you could you could put Micron in that in that category. I mean, I thought Micron was done. I thought it was done. I was waiting for 30s. I was so short this fucking thing. Oh my god! And then bam, <laughs> you know, insane. Uh, let's see. Uh, what other questions do we have? Uh, Mike is saying, can I have the course for five hundred dollars because I'm special, bro? I don't even fucking know you. That's the what? Who? Who is this dude? Tim here is saying, have you ever back tested uh, massaging your swing positions versus doing nothing to them? Is there really better performance for you uh, for added work? That's a great question. That is a that is a great question. I have never back tested that. I've always assumed that you know that that. You know, that 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 kind of would be the most ideal thing for my particular personality. You know what the other thing is for swing traders and, and uh, the webinar here that we had last week with Maz Master. If you guys missed that one, just go to YouTube for slash saying Lucci. You can find it on there. You got to separate this stuff. He was throwing it out there to me, too. I don't do it enough. I have different accounts for different styles. But sometimes if I get crazy, you know, I'll start mixing and mashing and that shit really fucks me up. So if, I, if you got a swing on a Microsoft, let's say, you put it in that one account, and then whatever it's doing, uh, you know, if it hits your target, great. You're making profit. If it doesn't, fuck it. Whatever. You took a loss. But if you mix and match and you start jumping into – you know, you start jumping your swing trades into your day trading account, oh, my God. You're going to make mistakes left and right because it's a whole different type of strategy for what you're doing. So to answer your question, Tim, no, I have never back tested it. However, like for me, I get super, super aggressive if I really like something. So when I when I want to take a shot, I take that fucking shot and I accept the consequences. So that's the cowboy side of me that, you know, is looking to juice the most out of a particular move like that. Netflix, yo, when I saw this thing at three back to like three thirty six, I froze. I fucking froze. You know what happened? I froze. I was doing I think I was doing other shit, too, at the time or something. I wasn't focused. I froze. And I was like, yo, I should fucking add another thirty five. You know what I mean? I should add another thirty five to what I got. And I had the three fifties. I had the three fifties and I had some weeklies. I was like, dude, this is a one hundred thousand dollar trade right here. This is at least if I'm not making one hundred thousand on this, I'm a fucking punk. And what did I end up making on? it? I made it. I made like forty five. I made forty five and change. But in reality. Dude, this thing was wide open, and the tape looked that good. The tape was that good, um, you know. So I kind of screwed. I screwed. I screwed the pooch on that one, you know. So I, I don't know, Tim. That's a. It's a tough question. It's a great question too, by the way. Uh, and I would say it depends on the person, you know. Uh, what are the questions here? We got Richard here saying, "Hey guys, is this master course similar to the one I did a few years ago?" 
Uh, definitely all new material. I don't think you need to sign up. Richard, just go ahead and hit up uh, Charlie or Charlie, you want to hit up Richard? Uh, you should be able to you should be able to get in that. Uh, Sundar is saying, did you swing Amazon? You should have swung Amazon from 1615 or whatever the hell it was, 1610. This is a tough hold, though. This is a tough hold. And guys, with options, it gets difficult because, again, like these things aren't moving. This is not moving the greatest. This is not the greatest moving chart that you've seen. Like, look at the five day on this. Look at how difficult it would have been for you to hang on to this shit. Like, you're telling me you're going to hang on to this shit? That's what you're telling me? For the last five days, you're going to hang on to an option? Even if you have time on this, you're telling me you would have hung on to this shit? What are you going to do with this? You know what I mean? You guys need to select an option that's going to go in the money, give you some uh, give you some intrinsic value, and then just fucking go. Okay? Amazon up four points or five points. It's going to give you shit like this. And this is where you want to be. You got to pick your names properly and you got to pick the, the you got to pick the right tape, you know? Most of you guys are sitting there looking at a chart and being like, "All right, yeah, it could go here." But when you add in the options to a chart, to a chart analysis, it makes the whole fucking world a difference. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? Okay? You could have looked at this Amazon and say, "All right, fuck it, I'm going to swing this Amazon." But you didn't you you wouldn't have been able to tell unless you're a tape reader and unless you're 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 looking at the type of movement that you're getting on the stock that this option was going to suck complete ass crack. Would you have? How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? And if you don't, this is why you fucking need me. This is this is this is what you're doing here and let's get to fucking work. Okay? Uh so uh, so again, would I swing Amazon? Sure. Would I trade an option with it? No. You know what I would do? How many of you guys uh let's see who's the real option trader here. What's the better what's the better option swing trade for this Amazon versus buying calls? Let's see who's let's see who's got some game. And if there's only two fucking answers, then you guys are all herbs and I should see you in the master course in a in a, in a couple of weeks. Uh, John is saying sell print. Here we go. We got a couple of people here with some with some intelligence. Look at you. I'm so proud of you guys. Yes. Sell these fucking puts. Yes. Come out here and sell the shit out of this stuff. Right. So you can come. Look at look, look, look at this. You could probably get you can probably go way out. Right. And you can look at this. You get four bucks. Hey, great. Four bucks. I get four bucks for this shit. Look at this. Look at this. Well, let's just go 100 points away. How much? I get two bucks at two bucks for 130 points away. Two weeks out. I'd sell this shit all day. You got it. You got 100 grand. Put put it all in here. <laughs> just sell it. Give me the easy premium. Let me go to fucking sleep. Right. So that's the easier way. Like if you're going to swing this Amazon, looking at the tape that you're getting here, it's better to sell puts. If you don't understand that, you, this is why you fucking need me. Okay. Uh, Eric is saying, did you sell the puts on Netflix when you bought the calls? Not when I bought the calls. Not not exactly when. So, Eric, it's, it's like, it, you know, I'll wait. I'll wait because you got to know, man, Eric, you got to know. You know what I mean? Like you, you got to know that you're you're in the clear. And this is why I go super far out of the money when I'm selling options. And guys, this whole strategy that I have on the side here, uh, you know, where I just write options. So I have a whole account here where I literally just write options that are so far out of the money. The chances of them getting hit are, you know. Are, are 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 pretty are pretty are pretty what what is the word I'm looking for percentage wise here you know pretty low so on this Netflix here I would go out let's say I'm taking a look at this week's on this Netflix and again I mean it's already freaking Friday it's already Friday here so let's take a look at next week's here so I go and I'm all I'm doing is scraping nickels and dimes and then if I like it and it's gonna make a move then I'll get aggressive. Then I'll get aggressive. So, Eric, to answer your question, I waited a little bit to like 340, and then I went, and then I went, uh, you know, and then I got aggressive with it. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Let's look at, uh, yeah, let's go out to freaking 320, right? So you can still get a quarter for this, you know, and that's 30 points out of the money for Netflix. I can get a quarter for this, you know. If I sell a 25 lot, what am I making? What's what's what am, <laughs> what am I making? I'm making 600 bucks. You know, if I sell 100 lot here, I'm making a couple of grand. Now, to sell 100 lot, obviously you gotta get you gotta have some stacks here. But I'd probably go to this 330 for next week. Sure, I'd write this, and then I'd write the other side too. 
So I'd take the call side and I'd write the 372. So and then and then Eric, based on that type of tape that I'm seeing, if we see more of this shit, oh man. I mean, you saw what happened to this week's. Look at this week's. Look at this week's 360 call. Look at the poor suckers who got in late to this trade. Look at this. Look at this shit. You know, these are all the poor suckers that paid five and a half, six bucks for this shit. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, Genie is saying uh, on your Netflix trade, how much did you use to make 50 grand in profit? I used shit. Uh, I mean, and again, like these numbers to me, I, I really don't give a shit. Um, but we'll find out right now. I think it was, I don't know, 16 grand maybe. I don't fucking know. I never know. I just throw the money in there. All right, here we go. Yeah, 16 grand. Genie, 16 Gs. I, you know what? I'd make it 20. I'd make it 20 because I bought, I, I bought some 350s too. So uh, like 20 grand, Genie. 20 grand, somewhere around there. That makes sense, Genie? Uh, yeah, somewhere around there. It might have been a little bit more, give or take. Uh, and again, those percentage gains are normal in the options market. However, if you don't have your timing down, how many of you guys, your biggest issue on options is timing? And everybody should be raising their hands right now because I'm raising mine. And if you're not raising yours, that means you're better than me. That's what you're saying. That's effectively what you're saying. Not to say you couldn't be better than me, but you know. Anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, if timing is your biggest issue, then options are, it, it's always going to be, it's all, it's always going to be an uphill battle for you on the options. You know what I mean? I mean, the same, you guys can see it with the Microsoft right here. How come I'm not playing weeklies on the Microsoft? Well, damn it. Look at this, look at this tape. This tape is garbage. It's complete ass crack. I mean, yes, there's, uh, there's some juice on the cues. So yes, it might look good here and there, but look at what they're doing to us, man. They're freaking killing us, killing us softly here with just these bullshit moves higher that get us to pay up, and then we just don't get any moves here. Let's look at the last five days. This is the, uh, the I think this is Dex. Yeah, this is the monthly. Look at this, right? What are you gonna do with this? So we already know just by looking at this is that all the attempts higher here, you know, get smoked out. Nobody is confident that $100 will break. Okay. So all they're doing is just burning this premium out. If we know that, then we know what the next decision should be. What should it be? Size the fuck down, wait for this thing to get cheaper, and continue to add more time. So even June is not enough time. So we'll let's stick with July here until we can figure out, like, hey, does this thing want to break 100 bucks? Hey, does the market look good? Hey, does it all look good together? If so, put 100 grand in. <laughs> okay? So again, it's all about piecing the, the 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 you know the puzzle together here. But if you don't understand how options work, premiums work, time decay works, the timing aspect of the equation when you are trying to get breakouts and breakdowns, which I know you guys all fucking love, you guys all love it, all right? And unless you're rotating the right names every single day, which is again quite complicated. However, it is lucrative too. If you can day trade and just scalp your way into stuff, that Facebook last couple of days has been amazing. You know, so there's always going to be a couple of one-offs here and there. This Google was insane today, absolutely insane. Most of the juice happened, uh, you know, right off the open, and then you get nothing. You know, so there's a lot of folks too that miss this, and then they expect to make the same amount of money here, and they get caught in this shit. How many of that was you guys? How many of that is you guys? How many of you guys missed that morning move and that huge move on that option and then you get stuck in the fucking shop and you day trade yourself to absolute shit because you're over trading? That's another major issue for a lot of people. This is another reason why you need to be positioned for a move before it fucking happens. Unless you're quick draw McGraw. You guys remember that cartoon? He was a dog, right? He was a dog? I think he was a dog. Was he a horse? Who was quick draw McGraw? I mean, he was good with the gun, but was he a dude or was he a cartoon character? I don't know. The point is, are you a gunslinger? Are you quick enough? Are you fast enough to, to move when you need to? You know, did you see this thing coming? Were you even planning for it? If not, you know, are you able to hop in and out? Um, 
you know, so those are the things that you 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 have to consider about yourself as a trader and have to put together. If you can't do it or are struggling to do it, come to me. We'll see you guys on June 25th again. Uh, I think we got three slots left. Uh, that's if Bathgate hasn't closed one of you guys. Um, so you'll get a thousand bucks off. Uh, and again, we start the 25th and all your access is right here. Uh, yeah, so Charlie said we got two spots left. Uh, so hopefully we'll see you guys and uh, we'll do another couple of webinars uh, probably in the next couple of weeks if I can swing it from Puerto Rico. All right. Take care, everybody. And uh, we'll see you soon. Any questions you guys have, hit up charlie at sanglucci.com. Latest.